Okay, thanks again. Uh, we go from Markdown to XML. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, um, I'm Stefan. I'm a technical writer at SUSE, um, and I'm going to be uh, presenting about um, what we do to try to keep our documents um, QA um, automatically or even just half automatically at this point. Um, I've been working with SUSE for the last two and a half years. Before that, I was a working student there, so I already have some bit of history with the company. Um, so, first of all, um, this is the outline of the talk. Um, I'll give you some pointers on uh, our workflow and our team, uh, what we do actually. Um, then I'll come to um, yeah the normal client-based checks um, that uh, each team member can do individually on their uh, machine. Um, afterwards, I um, continue with the server-based uh, checks that we do, and. <clears throat> Uh, finally, um, I won't be speaking about the documentation as such, but uh, the star sheets that we use to output um, HTML and PDF um, from our XML sources. Um, so, first of all, the team. Um, we're actually pretty small. I mean, we're actually not that small, but um, we kind of look like this. Um, this is, if you've ever seen um, a SUSE documentation presentation in the last two years, you may have seen this photo already. Um, but that was just a few of us. Um, and um, given the people, uh, the amount of people that we have, we have quite a big task. So we have to maintain around 15,000 uh, PDF A4 pages. Um, Mind you, there are some pages that are counted twice in there. I will um, come back to that in a minute. Um, and uh, the content that we do is everything that is published on suzu.com slash documentation and also the release notes that are at suzu.com slash release notes or um, ship with our products. Um, our main formats for documentation are um, HTML and PDF and EPUB. Um, what we do not do is we do not do um, Linux man pages and we also uh, do not uh, usually um, work on uh, the output of the various uh, management help commands. Um, so, um, and our workflow is based on DocBook. Uh, we're also currently looking into adopting ASCII doc at least for some tasks that are easier, but we're otherwise still quite happy with DocBook. Um, even though there's sometimes this, this kind of pushback um, that developers want something that is supposedly easy, um, we always put that in square quotes uh, in, in, in scare quotes when people say that Markdown is easy because it's actually not that easy, um, but ASCII doc is a good compromise, I guess. You lose some semantics. Um, yeah. Um, our basic approach and what we do is uh, this robustness principle. Uh, so we try to be liberal in whatever in imp input formats we accept. Um, but we are relatively conservative in what we output, which is pretty much always stock book at this point. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we have single sourcing. That means we have multiple output formats, uh, multiple output documents um, that are produced from the same source. So that means, for example, we have uh, the less and um, so the server and the desktop product documentation that are basically produced from the same XML source. Um, the only difference being that we exchange the product names 
and also that we uh, switch off some chapters for uh, each of the guides uh, that are not relevant. Um, and of course the second aspect of single sourcing is uh, usually taken for granted I guess today because it's just uh, that you can produce multiple output uh, formats. Um, our workflow is intentionally oriented <coughs> um, at what developers at SUSE also do, so we use Git and GitHub um, and increasingly use pull requests and reviews on those pull requests um, and we also use the uh, so-called GitFlow branching model uh, which uh, I think helps us a lot in um, yeah, keeping an overview of our branches. Um, in SUSE we have this thing called OBS, the open build server, um, that also builds some of our documentation. Um, and because of that we also have a fully open source tool chain, so because this server basically operates only on open source stuff. Um, and this tool chain um, is called DAPS, the Docbook Authoring and Publishing Suite. Um, uh, which we need because the upstream uh, docbook tool chain is, is sort of not a tool chain at all because um, it still needs all the glue uh, that holds it together um, and it also has some functionality gaps. Um, <clears throat> that's a bit different from Dita where you actually have a full tool chain that is um, prefab. Um, and that solves this toolchain problem for us. And it's also open source, so if you like, you can take a look and maybe solve it might solve it for you. Um, and <coughs> it's, what it does, it uh, takes uh, pieces from various upstreams uh, that are glued together. Um, for example, um, to enable the single sourcing uh, of documents from Mm. Uh, for different products, um, we need something called profiling, and those profiling star sheets need to be run uh, before the actual output star sheets. And this is basically stuff that DAPS does, um, keeping this um, flow. Um, it's a command line tool. Um, yeah, so we're a Linux company, we work pretty much all on the command line. Um, and it's also editor agnostic in that it's not particularly integrated into any specific editor. Um, and we all use different editors, so um, that's also something that I guess is somewhat special among documentation teams. Um, there are some processes that are external to our team and also um, are not really handled by DAPS or only um, some fringes of it are handled by DAPS, um, which is translation, which we have outsourced uh, to another uh, company, um, or yeah, free translator, uh, freelance translators. Um, and a final publication is also something that another team uh, at our mother company, uh, Microfocus, is doing. <clears throat> so with that, I come to the actual topic. Um, so the first main thing uh, we do client-side is of course validation because validation is necessary for XML and it's also uh, one of the things that um, makes XML worthwhile because you can very strictly say uh, which kind of content uh, you accept and which way in your document. Um, so we of course need validation. Um, to validate we have an own DocBook 5.1 based um, RNG schema. It's called BicoDoc. Um, basically what we do with that is we restrict uh, DocBook uh, to a certain degree because DocBook is quite free in uh, for example allowing um, lists within paragraphs. Um, which for layout reasons um, are not really what we want, so it's quite hard to lay out stuff like that sometimes. Um, 
it's run using depth validate. Um, so that's just the command we use. And <coughs> the validation is based on the uh, Jing tool, which is just yeah an upstream Java tool. Um, the next thing we have is something called style checker. Um, we have a SUSE style guide for our documentation, uh, basically uh, laying down language and structure rules uh, that authors uh, should adhere to. Um, why do we do this? Um, because we want to avoid confusing our readers and we also um, want to avoid translation costs. Um, so that's why we have a style guide that also um, includes some terminology rules um, so you get better translations um, and also avoid uh, confusing your readers with um, synonyms, etc. Um, the style, uh, style checker <coughs> is a custom thing and it checks for both language rules and some sort of soft uh, syntax rules um, that uh, are usually helpful but which we didn't want to um, yeah have validation um, crash on or yeah which which we didn't want to um, pull out the big hammer of validation for um, so one example for a language rule is um, that you um, that if you use the words in order to, which is um, a quite wordy phrase, um, <coughs> it asks you, uh, it suggests to use just the word to, um, which is already a lot shorter. Um, an example for syntax rules is uh, to avoid lonely sections. Uh, lonely sections are basically subsections that don't have any peers in their um, own yeah, section. Um, and this usually hints at a um, structuring issue. Um, one of the nice things uh, that having this uh, a custom program um, means is uh, that uh, we can actually integrate with XML um, and it's also a, necessi a necessity for us uh, because our documentation <coughs> features quite a few uh, commands with uh, very idiosyncratic names and <coughs> sorry um, It also enables some nice things for example we have a rule against using the hit uh, the word hit uh, to mean uh, press a key and <clears throat> because we um, mark up uh, our keys uh, in docbook with the uh, keycap element we can just look for the keycap element and look whether there's uh, the word hit or press in front of it um, and I'll put an error message or warning message if there is the word hit um, it's written in Python uh, with lots of XSLT and lots of regular expressions. Um, and I'll give a short um, Okay, I think mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give a short preview. This is um, what the output looks like. So we have messages. Um, you see this is an XML file actually styled with uh, CSS, which works. Um, but <coughs> um, it tends to produce quite a bit of output. Um, so checks for sentence length. So this is just... Um, actually a relatively well checked uh, file and it's also just the <coughs> installation quick start guide which is maybe 30 pages and a lot of screenshots um, it tends to produce a lot of output for longer documents so um, <coughs> some of it is also false positive so yeah that's that's not ideal 
Um, okay. Um, So what do we have in terms of future plans? Uh, the, one of the first things is uh, that, and we already have a work in progress for this, um, is adding spell check, which might seem weird to you because you might think this is the first thing we'd add, but we already had a pre-existing spell checker in DAPS, so I didn't re-implement this uh, immediately. Um, there's also an issue with source lines. <clears throat> That's also a bit of a hard problem. And we have the issue of output formats um, because this XML file is not, it's not scaling that well, um, I must say. And uh, we'd also like some editor integration, though we probably need uh, HTML output and also some kind of plain text output that is readable. Um, next on, we have uh, server-based <coughs> checks. Um, <coughs> And then we uh, have oh. Travis, which is relatively new in our tool chain. Uh, Travis is a Docker-based uh, CI system uh, that integrates with GitHub. Uh, it's free as in beer, uh, unfortunately only. Um, why do we want this? So um, I said we have this uh, GitHub uh, pull request um, workflow. Um, <coughs> And this pull request workflow um, also means uh, that we get pull requests from others, other teams at SUSE. Um, not everyone is actually uh, running a validator, um, and some people are validating only with DocBook 5 instead of our more strict Kiko Doc um, schema. Um, and uh, Travis gives us some sort of quick feedback there. Um, <coughs> It also uh, consistently, consistently checks all output documents, which is necessary to prevent a problem we've had before. Uh, that is that uh, sometimes uh, people would only check um, for uh, would only check some output documents and uh, other output documents that were not needed at the time uh, were then languishing, sometimes even for months. Uh, and were basically not buildable. Um, so Travis makes sure that we keep this stuff buildable all the time. Uh, and yeah, to do that, we have a Docker to container with OpenSUSE and DAPS in it, um, with which we validate. And we also make sure that all images um, are successfully <coughs> checked in. So. Sometimes people forget Git adding um, an image they added to the documentation, and it's good to check that on the server. But we're not really at the end there. So um, one of the other um, plans we have is that we want uh, to use Travis to actually uh, build our documentation and publish it to GitHub pages. Um, and uh, integrating the style checker would also be a nice idea, but uh, we'd have to look at uh, how to not inundate uh, people with uh, too many messages. Um, but as I just spoke about publishing, we already also have uh, an internal, um, basically nightly build publishing platform, uh, which is helpful for getting uh, early developer feedback um, and um, sometimes, unfortunately, valid uh, XML does not mean that our PDF spill. Um, <clears throat> that's basically fringe cases, but it's relevant enough. Um, so in those cases, you actually get mail from our internal publishing server. Um, Yes, this uh, server builds documentation uh, automatically once a day um, or on demand from a web UI. It also has a search and it has a quite interesting sort of technology stack, if you want to call it that. Um, 
I have a quick example here. So this is not the actual live server, but this is what the overview page of it looks. So basically, you can just request a, a rebuild here. Um, and our documentation looks like that then. So with the draft logo and things like that. Um, yeah. Now, on to um, our star sheets. Um, so I'm finishing with the documentation itself. Um, the star sheets, um, what are they actually? Um, so the DocBook upstream project has these XSLT star sheets that format uh, your document um, as HTML or PDF or man pages or EPUB. Um, <coughs> lots of different formats. But of course, we want to add a dash of green to that and our SUSE logo and things like that. Um, and so we have our own uh, custom uh, SUSE star sheets that actually import the DocBook star sheets from upstream. <coughs> um, and why do we need to check that? Uh, it's actually pretty simple. Um, XSLT is complicated. Um, it's not. Uh, always clear um, at the first glance um, how the flow works because it uh, calls uh, template rules and depending on which template rules are also present um, the template rule and use might change. Um, then we also have to keep DocBook 4 and DocBook 5 compatibility. Um, we have to keep language compatibility and since we output quite a few um, Output performance, uh, those are also um, in need of uh, checking whether they still work. So, uh, and since our HTML is also responsive, that's basically like three different formats all at once. Um, okay, and yeah, we need to check whether our bug fixes work. And as a bonus, we, uh, we also get uh, documents that we can use for manual tests. So what does Dubs Compare do? Um, it creates lots of little images um, from um, our documentation. Um, and then it, uh, yeah, you basically run it once before you make a change to the star sheets. And once after you made this change to the star sheets, and it automatically automatically compares uh, those uh, reference images to the comparison images, uh, and then shows you in a nice little cube-based viewer um, a side-by-side -side view um, of those images uh, with um, changing sections uh, actually highlighted. Um, yeah, we made something custom for that because um, what we wanted was actually pretty simple. We just wanted to run dubs um, as parallel as possible um, and then get those images. Unfortunately, I can't show you uh, the program right now, um, not even the viewer, <coughs> because it hung up on me this morning. So I'm sorry for that. And but we have some future plans. We need more example documents there, um, especially in different languages. And another idea is to also run this on Travis, uh, which we're not yet doing. And with that, I am at the end. Um, is quirky and complex to use. Yeah. Worst of all, it is not itself terribly well documented. There is literal documentation of what it is, but not the why or how. So you have to learn for yourself. Have you found anything that explains to you how to write XSLT start sheets? Uh, unfortunately, you're not German. There's actually quite a good uh, documentation site that is German only. 
Um, I'd be prepared to learn German. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a company called data to type if you're German, um, that actually, they have actually produced quite good documentation for XSLT. Um, sometimes you can use um, Mozilla Developer Network. That works, but uh, also Microsoft has pretty good at documentation, I must say. Um, that also works for me quite a lot of times. Um, yeah, sorry, the question was um, whether there's good documentation for XSLT. Okay, um, more questions, yes? Um, just in terms of uh, workflow, you mentioned you're using GitHub and PRs. Um, are you using any supplementary uh, things, you know, Jira, Bugzilla, something like that? How do you hook together your reviews with um, subject matter experts? Um, so the question was whether we use uh, Jira or Bugzilla or another back tracker and how we. Um, pull that together with uh, GitHub, uh, with our GitHub uh, workflow. Uh, so yes, we have uh, SUSE Buxilla. Um, we also have an internal feature tracking system called FAID. Um, it works basically the same, but it's for features, not for bugs, which is a sort of arbitrary distinction. Um, but yes, we, we do that, um, but we do also notice that a lot of our developers are actually working on GitHub. Uh, as well, so um, keeping uh, people on GitHub is actually not a bad idea. Okay, yes. Um, you uh, you have your kind of custom uh, RelaxNG that's a, a modified version of yeah. your doc books, and you have some various other checks. Um, have you looked into using uh, Schematron to implement any of those checks and, instead of modifying the style sheets or? Um, so the question was whether we are looking into Schematron. Um, yes, we currently are. Um, on the other hand, Schematron is sort of like XSLT Lite in a way. Um, so yes, we're currently looking at Schematron too because Jing also supports Schematron, but uh, it is a bit buggy because um, the docbook RNG uh, actually includes some Schematron rules but Jing can't execute them because they're um, in um, because they're embedded in the RNG. Um, so we're currently looking at how we actually can solve this pickle there. Yeah. One more, maybe. Or cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can we again? So look to your right if there's an empty seat, shift one up.